Super Bias 80 Carries League of Legends Patch Notes for Patch 8.3. In which case we have a rework for Swain, in which case now he looks like a cross between Grand Moth Karkin from Star Wars and Lucius Malfoy from Harry Potter. As well as some generalist champions that need some much needed sharpening of their intended weaknesses to give opponents more deliberate counterplay. There's also some love coming for some iconic auto attackers, as well as some outliners both strong and weak for mid marksmen being either nerfed or buffed to make them a bit more appealing. So let's just get into it. Azir, the AP Marksman, the magic damage 80 carry from another mother. If we are the authors of history, then history sure does like to repeat itself, because once again Azir is one of the strongest mid laners in pro play, so they have to nerf him. Because right now, you have a better chance of trying to dodge raindrops than his poke in lane. So the cooldown on his Q is going up, from 11, 19 and a half, 8, 6 and a half, and 5, to 15, 12 and a half, 10, 7 and a half, and 5. On top of that, his W arise, Azir soldiers now draw minion aggro towards Azir, because somehow this bird with all that mobility dodged that change in last patch. Jarvin. Right now, J4 puts the J in, I want to jump off a small curve head first when I'm playing against this champion. Why would you play any other jungler when this guy can be the tank you need, the diver you need, or the early fighter that you need? He kind of does everything, one of the generalists we talked about. So they're dialing down his base armor from 38 to 34 to give opponents and duelists a better shot at fighting him at least earlier. Don't know if that will actually change anything, but we'll see. Jin. Right now, Jin isn't sitting pretty after the nurse to Sorcerer and Lethality, putting him in a weaker spot than they'd like. Right now, his art is more like MS Paint instead of Picasso. So, they're buffing some of his base damage back up. The base damage on his ultimate is going from 50, 115, and 180 to 50, 125, and 200. Still won't stop me from missing all four of my ult skill shots, but still blaming my support for stealing the kill as if I would have hit the W afterwards after missing four skill shots anyway. Also, Riot please, make it so that hyperspeed gen is potentially viable. That'd be nice. Katarina. I'm not going to say this champion takes absolutely no skill to play, I am going to say it must be nice having that much mobility, resets, and damage. If you disagree with me, too bad, because the patch notes agrees with me, and it's why they're actually nerfing her damage at all levels on her passive. Because even when she is shut down in lane, Katarina's high base damage helps her leave the laning phase relevant even in losing matchups. If you think there's something okay with that, I'm sorry, but let me also tell you Santa Claus might not exist. Kog'Maw. Right now, for a late game scaling carry, Kog'Maw spikes a bit too hard too early off of one item, and particularly a Rage Blade. For comparison, a good and healthy and great hyper carry by the name of Jinx doesn't build a recurve bow and is suddenly dangerous to all people in her path. So they're lowering the maximum health damage on Kog'Maw's W from 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7% of a target's maximum health to 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5% of a target's maximum health. Now my counter argument as a bias to carry, however, is if you're really having trouble with Kog'Maw, he has no escapes. He's immobile, and if you can't deal with him, maybe you actually just need to get good. Lucian. Anybody who says they wish old Lucian was back never played against old Lucian. Though yes, I too, especially as a bias to carry, wish he was even half as cool as he was in the climb cinematic. However, with that said, they are thinking Lucian could in fact use some love, but they want to make the majority of what he's getting being felt more traditionally in the bot lane than other roles. So, on a second shot of his passive, it's going up from 40, 15, 60 percent of its attack damage to 50, 55, and 60 percent of its attack damage. The second shot's crit damage is also going up from 50 percent to 75 percent. And right now, you just realized that Lucian's passive had scalings whatsoever. On top of that, Riot, I guess, doesn't understand. No one really builds crit Lucian no matter what role they're going. Except for me, but I don't count because I'm terrible at Lucian. Master Yi, our melee AD carry from another mother, if you will. The only thing Master Yi does well right now and is the master of is just not being good. While he does need a lot of gameplay improvement, he doesn't need to be so weak in the meantime, so they're giving him a bit more damage so he can stop feeling like Mr. Yi. On his alpha strike, the mana cost is going down from 70, 80, 90, 100, and 110 to 70, 75, 80, 85, and 90 mana. Meanwhile, on his EE Wuju style, the base damage is going from 14, 23, 32, 41, and 50 to 18, 26, 34, 42, and 50, while the ratio is going from 25% bonus attack damage to 35% bonus attack damage. Now, at least when you decide to go in as Master Yi and you forget to prop W at all, you feel a little bit more bad about the extra damage that you're now going to be missing. Rise. 
Dr. Manhattan's depressed brother right now is a bit too powerful with his Zonia stopwatch combo, and fortunately a bit more dressed. So, right now, if you activate Stopwatch or Zonia's Hourglass, it now cancels Rise's ultimate, as if he was interrupted by crowd control. Because let's be real, being able to turn gold and teleport away is absolute garbage unless we're watching Dragon Ball Z. And even then, let's be real, some people will still say, that's bull. Says Wani. Like Jarvan, says Wani is pretty good at everything, including, and actually, being good at not being picked unless she is top tier. She's a late scaling tank with good damage and crowd control. She doesn't need such high early game mobility too, so they're dialing back on that. Her Q, Arctic Assault's cooldown is going from 13, 12 and a half, 12, 11 and a half, and 11 seconds, to 17, 15 and a half, 14, 12 and a half, and 11 seconds. Trindamir. I have no idea why Try is in this champion's name, because you absolutely do not to play this champion successfully. Our other melee AD carry from another mother, if you will, when it comes to crit scaling, this champion also has an invulnerability pretty much in his kit. Give me that on any AD carry and I will get challenger in a week, I promise you. That's unfair and I do not like the idea of the champion getting buffed whatsoever, especially as an AD carry. Crit on crit crime is terrible and we should not be facing each other, brother. But anyway, like Master Yi, Trinomir could just use some more damage right now. No, he couldn't, but that's I guess what they decided. So his attack damage growth is going up from 3.2 to 3.7. While meanwhile in his E spinning slash, the ratio is going up from 120% bonus attack damage to 130% bonus attack damage. Live your split pushing dreams. Just fortunately do it away from me as I try and backline your team to death across the map when you refuse to group because all you're supposed to do is split push. Endlessly. Victor. It's ironic that his name is Victor, because right now he does a lot of losing. Seriously, he's probably one of the worst mages in the game right now, if not one of the worst champions in the game. Fortunately, he's on Riot's radar, and they're looking to do something about that. On his Q, Siphon Power, the Augment, Turbocharge, now also increases Siphon Power's shield value by 60%. On top of that, his R, Chaos Storm, is having his cooldown lowered, from 120, 110, and 100 seconds, to 120, 180 seconds. Now at least, when he now builds Rylize and pops Chaos Storm on me more often, I have more an excuse to excuse why I'm a bad AD carry, instead of just having good positioning. Long live the glorious evolution. Zoe. Zoe is getting yet another buff. It's almost like Riot is validating all those people that have been complaining about Zoe since her release by nerfing her patch after patch. Her cool cooldown is getting increased, because Palisar's cooldown doesn't give opponents enough long windows to take advantage of. So the numbers are changing from 7.5, 7, 6.75, 7, 6.5, 6 and, and 6.25 to 8.5, 8, 7.5, 8, 7, 7, and 6.5 and seconds of cooldown. This champion already lost Ezreal when he got killed off the meta, let her be, Riot. There are some health regeneration number changes to every champion in the game, so they no longer have any weird numbers like 1.87259. It's either all full number or it's a half number. Cho'Gath got some visual ability updates, because let's be real, his abilities look like they were straight out of something from the 2000s, the early 2000s, the dark times of the 2000s. Though I don't think these ability changes are really going to matter that much, because all I'm going to be worried about as an AD carry is when he flashes on my face and does 2,000 true damage with his ultimate, despite being absolutely full tank. There are some changes to the inspiration tree when it comes to runes. Right now, Unsealed Spellbook, for example, will no longer give 25% summoner cooldown reduction, but instead 15. Magical Footwear and Time Watch are now in the same tier in the rune tree, so you have to now choose one or the other to take, you can no longer take both. There are some changes to the scoreboard. Vision score now displays for your team, find it in the trinket slot. Minor changes to give stats more breathing room for your comparison, and the scoreboard beard mode now has its layout change to clear direct champions of CS and KDA. Rune features. You can now hide preset pages and champ select. The keystone, chosen, now shows up at the end of game screen. If you switch your primary while editing runes, your selections for the secondary style will still persist. There will also be new animations in the page editing screen if you don't have low spec mode on. When it comes to the rotating game mode, we've been missing it for a couple weekends. Hunter the Blood Moon is coming back from the 8th all the way to the 19th with no interruption in between. Two weeks straight of good old assassination. With certain champions being free to play, and other champions being available if you own them. Combine that with some bug fixes, which are a bit too much to read, a new skin for Gnosis, Warwick, 
Sweetheart Zaya and Rakan just in time for Valentine's, and Lunar Rebel Lux for the Lunar Rebel coming out. Put on some chromas for all those skins. Throw in the emotes now for the Lunar Rebel as well as Valentine's Day. And once again, reference the Swain rework and all of his skins that are coming with it. And you have yourself a completed patch notes for patch 8.3 of League of Legends. As told by a super biased AD Carry who believes every change in the game is out to get the AD Carry role. Thank you so much for watching this video if you did. I really appreciate the support. If you want to like, comment, subscribe as well, I'd also appreciate that as well too. So, that is all for this video. I don't know which video will be next, because life will be quite a mess. So until this time, take care from the Fargo Die FS, and thank you, once again, for watching.